Okay, the guys are putting the stands down to illustrate and demonstrate how the wheels come out of this machine. Machines down on the stands. Now Josh is unpinning that wheel. Wheel comes out. Now in operating position. You notice the same on the other side. The machine forward, lift the stands, and the bagger is in field position. Yeah. Also notice a new thing we're trying, this hopper extension for grain carts that are equipped with a little shorter auger just to assist in that length of auger. Keeps the auger cart farther away from the machine and from the bag. John's getting the rope ready. This makes it a lot easier than other older models and other brands. That pan comes out from the machine to make the bag go on the machine much easier than in the past. Essentially all they did was they disconnected the cable from the winch and the pin clip right there. You just pull that pin and that cable and the pan is ready to be pulled away from out from underneath the machine as you can see there. We want to make sure before we put the bag on that all rocks and debris are free from the pan because the pan, rocks, or anything sharp could score or tear a hole in the bag on the bottom and, and never see it until you would extract later on. We've got several guys helping us today, but this system can be done with one individual. But you're going to see several guys running around this thing today just to speed the video up. Essentially, you're seeing the bag from the very start in the box. Each box comes with a roll of tape in case you would have a hole. Also a tape measure for your stretch marks if you use them. At the top of each bag you're going to see a sticker there that if you use it, and here's the tape, indicating your stretch. The stretch mark on the bag when it comes out is exactly 11 inches. The max stretch, not the goal, but the max stretch is 12 inches. 
we're going to show later on in the video yep. that we can do a couple other things besides measuring the stretch marks to give adequate stretch and see this from the grain cart. So what they're doing now is they're just stretching that bag out, pulling those folds out, getting ready for the cradle to lift the bag onto the machine. Okay, so the next step, and they're working on this right now, is basically just pulling that top away from the bottom. And what you'll see here in a little bit is we're going to lay that cradle right in the middle of that bag. And then the cradle does all the work lifting the bag up on the machine. So now you will see here Josh is, is un securing the cradle so that the cradle is ready to come off the machine. It's on rollers, the winch, and the cradle are on a slide that so pulls back. One of the beauties of the cable is it helps us lift the bag without having to pull the bag to the cradle which is what people have to do in some other models where the cradle is fixed to the machine. The cable allows us to be very flexible with where this cradle sits, especially for the 500 foot bags. 500 foot bag weighs approximately 750 pounds, so we like the flexibility of being able to pull the cradle over to the bag so that we never have to move this 750 pounds of plastic anywhere. The most we have to do is pull the top half back to allow for this cradle to be positioned in the center of the bag. The cradle is equipped with those hinges as you can see there so as they lower that cradle it will flatten out which makes it easier to pull that bag onto the top of the cradle and then up onto the bag here as you'll see here in a moment. So as it gets flat, they're gonna pull that bag up on top of the cradle, just grabbing a hold of those twines. We never want to cut those strings until we are completely secure onto the bag machine. The next step is going to be going up, and you'll see as we lift this bag, those folds and that are going to straighten out. Our next step will then be attaching the pan to the bottom of the bag, and when that's complete, we will go on the machine with the bag and the pan again. is they're going to set that bottom of the bag 
on into the pan and then lower the cradle so that these arms will then secure the bag to the pan, locking them in on both sides. Once those are locked, we are ready to go on the machine. You can cut the plastic twines on the bottom only so that you don't have to crawl under the machine. Just one simple trick that we found that keeps this process a little simpler. Now we're ready to go up. Basically just clear that top pipe, it gives yourself more clearance on each corner down low. You're getting it set just right. And your winch is on rollers so it slides forward very nicely. The other thing you can do to help if you're by yourself is you can tip the machine forward to give yourself that extra gravity advantage to allow the bag and the roller to fall downhill instead of level but we've got plenty of help today so we're essentially putting it on to the machine in a level position you've seen how easy that bag went past you're going to want to make sure those rubbers are eventually pulled past the bag but what our goal now is is that we're going to put those same pins back in place that we saw before. We're doing it on both sides. We're getting in back in place. next step is we're going to be dropping the saddles up above to tighten the bag around the machine, which you'll see Josh doing here, essentially drop And now we're going to lower the cradle onto those stands and it will be in operating position. Our next step is going to be pulling the hoop. We want to make sure we pull the hoop back up against this bracket until it's tight and then fasten that with that lock so that when the bag starts to come off the machine that it won't pull the hoop with it. On both sides. All right, so now we're going to illustrate how to pull these bars back that we use to secure the pan. He's basically going to raise the pan to take some pressure off the bag so that we can unlock these arms. So basically, there you go. So essentially you can either pull them back or put them in flow. This is completely back obviously or you can just unlock them and let them float. Either one works. You just want to make sure that you don't leave them locked because it can allow for grain to possibly pass through the corners especially in dry corn bagging downhill. And they did the other side as well. So now we're going to move into the setting the pan. 
when you set the pan you want to use this bar as an indicator and you're going to raise the pan to where the bar is parallel with the back of the machine as you see in the video right here once you get it parallel then you're ready to pull the bag out essentially cut the twines which the boys are going to do here in a second once all the twines are cut we'll pull the bag out and illustrate to everyone the proper procedure to start the bag seal the end and begin the grain bagging process are cut we'll be pulling the first layer of plastic off the machine to then fasten the boards that we have here to seal the bag taking that first layer you notice he lowered the pan just slightly to make it easier to pull that first layer out from the pan. And again, so now we're going to put the rope on before we go any farther so that it doesn't pull more than one fold at a time off of the bag. The rope is extremely critical. The rope essentially is used to, number one, keep the corn in the bag and not leaking out the front of the system. But the other thing the rope does is it keeps all those folds on the machine except for the outside layer so that those folds don't come off the machine more than one at a time. So now he's tightened the pan back up now that he's got the plastic out. We always want to make sure we set the pan first before we set the tension on the rope because if you change the pan you essentially change the tension on the rope that John is securing as we speak. And we want to get this rope as tight as we can by hand. It's almost impossible to get the rope too tight but in the event that you do you would see this rope roll with the bag as it's coming off the machine as you're bagging. As long as it's not rolling and pinching the bag, you're in great shape. We just want to make sure, as you see later on, that that rope doesn't roll off the top of the bag past that hoop at the top. And so he's making that rope just as tight as he can, and he's going to tie it off right there on that handle. Okay, so now the next step is going to be putting the small ropes on the big rope and essentially all the small ropes are for is to keep the rope from falling off the machine and held back. These ropes are going to be secured to these eyelets right here and there's seven of these up and over the machine and you want to be sure to use all seven. The one at the top on the orange portion or the cradle is positioned in a V which we'll illustrate later but as you can see here Josh has already set this one as you can see these are adjustable and you essentially adjust that rope so that it pulls, it's maybe hard to see in the video, but so that it pulls the rope off of the machine maybe in half to one inch. That gives you some flexibility as the plastic layers are removed as you begin the bagging process. Over time we're going to want to make sure we readjust these ropes at least once in a 500 foot bag, maybe twice, because as these layers disappear this rope that you're seeing loosens throughout the process. Not a big deal if you see these ropes 
if they do get too loose, the rope, the big rope, is going to slide over this pipe, which is not the end of the world, but you want to make sure you keep that rope right behind the bag, and that top one, as we talked about before, is in a V. But all the rest of these ropes are going to be straight across as you see in both the left and right side of the machine and can be adjusted as you see here. Okay, so now we're going to illustrate how to start the bag. The boys are pulling the plastic off. You can see the rope is properly secured with all the small ropes. They're going to pull 10 to 15 feet back just enough to get the boards to seal the start of the bag. So as you can see, they're just gonna sandwich the plastic. In this case, our boards are actually a little bit short. So they're gonna take these corners. If you have shorter boards, that's okay. You're just gonna take these corners and fold them under as you can see Jason doing here, so that the boards match the length. Otherwise, 14 foot lumber is ideal. You also want to make sure the boards aren't too long, so that if you do have to push snow, say next to one of these, that a blade or a push box scraper would not hit those boards. Once you get to this point, just nail it shut, or you can use a screw gun, whatever you've got that's handy to seal that up. Once he's done sealing the bag, we're going to illustrate how to fold this seam underneath. So now we're going to take that board and we're going to fold it under and we're going to bring it back closer to the machine here. And the reason we do that is we want the corn to come out of the top of this auger and have that grain come down over the top of that board. Okay, you can also see the Richiger has the hydraulic cylinder to adjust the pitch of this machine from the cab. Now it's critical that when we start the bag that we have the machine positioned slightly forward so that once all the weight is loaded into this machine that we don't have this machine tipping back and dragging on this pan right there. So we like to have the position of the machine slightly forward and then making sure that stocks or debris are not dragging here. Once they start dragging here then our ability to manage the brake pressure and the pressure we put against the bag to manage stretch is altered because we can't manage what's being drug underneath this pan so it's critical we have proper clearance so that we can manage all our brake pressure from the station here with our hydraulic disc brakes you can see here with this machine that it is slightly forward 